All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined just up the coast in Northern California by Hilary de Caesar. How are you doing, Hilary? Uh, you know what, I'm doing great. Thanks, John, for having me. Oh, absolutely. And Hillary is an executive and transformative coach, an award-winning entrepreneur and a podcast host as well. And you have, la you have launched the um, Relaunch Collective, and this is where you help people relaunch their, their lives, their careers, whatever it is they, they want to transform uh, about themselves as a, as a coach. And we're going to talk today, very interestingly, that was a great lead-in, but we're actually going to talk about bugs. Um, and before you before you start thinking that we're either we're either getting into computer programming here or we're getting into uh, extermination, no, we're actually talking about bugs, which are beliefs underground surfacing that can hold you back from success, and the four steps to remove them. So, Hillary, let's get straight into it and just go back again and define what beliefs underground surfacing. What is all that about? Well, when you think about you being you right now and this, this identity, the self-image you have of yourself, what happens is we many times have these goals. We have goals that we put out there and we get knocked down, right? You think you're almost there and then something doesn't quite work. And you're like, why? Why isn't this happening for me? Why is this so easy for so-and-so, but I can't get there? And what I found by working, I was a psychology major and I got into neuroscience and coaching around this is that there, was, there were certain things that all of a sudden we're holding people back at a certain level. And what I realized was that it, it was their belief system and that they could never go above where their beliefs were allowing them to go. And that's really interesting because if you're sitting here making decisions and you're going with actions and you're trying to get results, but you're stuck at that belief and that what's happening in your life isn't happening because it you won't be allowed to go above your belief system. All of a sudden I thought, what's going on? And I realized it was these, these bugs were holding you back. Beliefs underground surfacing. And they come up at the most inopportune time. And so what I decided to do was create an actual pathway to what we call blast the bugs. It's belief blasters. It's a four-step process. And it starts with really this concept with the relaunches. Everyone's going through relaunches, especially now. There's not a person I talk to daily that isn't going through at a minimum one relaunch in their life, possibly multiple. And it could be a relaunch in their business. It could be a relaunch in their relationships. It could be a relaunch in their personal development. You know, something's happened in the last year that just makes you feel like, you know what? I need to do a complete relaunch. And so mm -hmm. when you start looking at the steps associated with what we call the relaunch effect, the relaunch effect are seven steps. And the problem is, is that at any point, bugs can surface. And yeah. so this is where it gets interesting because people think, just go ahead and stomp those bugs, right? Just kill them, squash them. Mm -hmm. I can do that. I've got <laughs> willpower. And, and John, you know, it doesn't work. No, no, no. And just and, and on, those, uh, on, on those beliefs, I mean, so these beliefs can often come from way back they can come from your childhood they can come from your experiences they can come from the environments that you were in they can they can be self-created in many ways um so how do you start to identify because i think i don't think a lot of people sit down very often and say hmm, i wonder what my beliefs are or what my belief system is um so how do you identify what these under underground beliefs are you know where i always like to start is what is the resistance that is holding you back. 
What, when you start to think about moving forward, if you start to think that, you know, you're procrastinating or you're mm. going for perfectionism and things aren't getting done, there's usually a belief underground surfacing right then and there. And what I found so interesting is that as we go through our daily, you know, life, we have everything, you know, 90 to 95% is automated. It's just automatically mm -hmm. happening so that we can keep our, you know, it, it, think about it. if you have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, these thoughts, and 85% are, are negative, right? Right? These are negative thoughts. And if we had to process all of those thoughts, we would be flat out on our back. We wouldn't be able to even like move because it would be so exhausting. So what's happened is your brain has automated, your subconscious is now automated. And when something is repeated over and over, then your brain says, hey, this, this thought tied to this emotion, because right, a thought is something that is happens and then you mm -hmm. have this feeling about it and there is like a second you know nanosecond right. before and then all of a sudden you have these beliefs and your beliefs equate to your identity and your habits back up and and support your identity and your beliefs so what really gets interesting i think is that when you start to realize that, okay, I'm starting to have, I'm, I have this feeling that's going in my body right now. Like right. why, mm -hmm. why am I feeling like I'm not going to be able to be successful? And then you know that a thought was triggered right before the feeling, because that's, that's the way it happens in your, in your body. Mm -hmm. You can then say, well, what was the thought that I was thinking before I had this feeling? Cause that was right. the trigger. And so I like to think about like resistance. What is it about this that's holding me back? And then what was that feeling? What's the feeling in my body? And a lot of times, John, when I ask you, when mm -hmm. you're, um, when you're starting to, you know, procrastinate or you're, you're starting to push back, where do you feel it in your body? Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting, uh, question. Um, I, I don't I, I don't know if I can answer that, but but it definitely is um, it's definitely tense, right? It definitely makes me tense when I'm procrastinating and I know I'm procrastinating for and I and I'm having an issue with something, it's definitely tension because to your point, there's always a physiological reaction too. Right. And a lot of people will carry it in their shoulders. Mm -hmm. They'll carry it in their lower back. They'll carry it in their stomach. They'll feel a pressure in their, you know, their sternum area. And that's your indication. That's what's going on. It's your right. body telling you, hey, wake up, wake up. There's something going on. And as you said, this can be something that occurred when you were young that you don't even know about. Yeah. You have no idea. But when you start to pay attention to your body, because that's going to be the first thing that happens is this feeling that you're having then you can ask yourself, all right, what's the thought? And that is actually step number one, because mm -hmm. it's awareness. It's awareness that you're having this thought that potentially is not serving you well. Because when you're, when you're having a great thought, you are like, all right, things are good. Yeah. Like you're not thinking like you're feeling good. You're vibrating at that high level. You know, you're not feeling like, Ooh, I got this like thing in my neck. I got this like stomach thing going on. And so awareness is super important. So let's say you have a belief that's not serving you a limiting belief that you're not good enough, right? That, you know what, I, I, you know, let's just use, I get this one quite a bit. You're starting a business, you're trying to scale the business, but you really don't have an extended amount of business experience. So you're like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, it's like that imposter syndrome. It's like, yeah, it's uh, that imposter syndrome. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm not good enough. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of winging it. So as soon as you have this, what you do is you, you literally are aware of it and you write down, you write down all the times that you have thought 
that you, and again, when I say I'm not good enough, this could be, I'm not worthy. You have to be like, what are the words you're saying to you? Because I might say, I might be kicking myself. I might be in my own head saying, hey, you're not good enough to do that. But you right. might be using the word worthy and you have to use your word. So at that point, you write it down. You just list all these times that you felt that you weren't good enough. All right. That's step one. Yeah. One- and by the way, I, I, I was just sorry to interrupt, but I, I love that because it, the awareness piece and the, you know, things like imposter syndrome and things, things that can so undo you. Uh, and you, and the funny thing is you tend to listen, you know, people tend to listen to that voice and then don't look for evidence to the contrary. Uh-huh. They just accept the voice. Well, and so guess what? Step mm-hmm. number two is once you have written down all the different times where see, see, it's true. See, that really did happen. See, see, you know, it's like all that, like, oh yeah, I really am. I'm really not worthy. Look at all, look at, you know, look at how bad I am. Look at how I really have never been able to do this. I haven't been acknowledged in that. The second part, and again, I always say write it down because what you're doing is you're using different parts of your brain and what we want. And by the way, if you throw colored pens in there even better because then you're Mm -hmm. writing it down you're thinking logically and you're using that creative side the more you're trying to light up your brain in different areas the better and so the second part is actually and i mentioned this earlier that we have something called the relaunch effect for every single relaunch out there step number one is release and so what do i mean by release because that's step number two in the belief blasters What you need to do is release the awareness of what you're doing by looking at the evidence, as you said, of when it wasn't true, when it didn't, like if you believe that you're not good enough, when were you good enough? When did you achieve something? When were you like, yeah, I got this. Like, uh, yeah. And you write those down. And there's always those few that are out there like, Nope, can't find any evidence. Yeah. It's just not happening, Hillary. Cannot find it. And that's when I say, look around. Who else out there is actually doing what you would achieve is good enough? Mm. And at that point, you can you can use their existence because now you know if it can happen to them, the universe is not sitting here saying, Hey, all right, John, you're going to be super successful. Yeah, but Hillary, uh, uh-uh, she's not. Yeah. No, it, I mean, it, it, it's neutral, right? It's just like it, it wants everybody to be, you know, super successful and super great. It's the beliefs, those bugs that hold us back. So, step number two is this whole idea of releasing. Yeah, no, and I love that, but because I, I come across this a lot with with people is uh, it's like I helped somebody not that long ago um, with their resume, right? And the first thing that they said, of course, is saying, oh, you know, I don't really have much to put in it. I you know, haven't really done much. I haven't achieved much. And I said, okay, well, let's just go through. Let's go through chronology and let's talk about these things. And by the end of it, they were going, wow, I never looked at all the things I've done like that. And I said, yeah, look at the totality of it all. I said, you've got, you've, you've come through, you've got incredible talents and you've come through, you know, challenges and you've shown initiative and all this kind of thing. And, but they'd never looked at it because they'd never put those pieces together. 100%. And I had the privilege of working actually with two just awesome uh, people that are heavy into the neurospace. One is uh, Dr. Shannon Irvine. And then the other one is John Gray, the books, Mm -hmm. men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I've worked with them and I use in step number three, I actually merge two of their, like one suggestion from each of them in order to get to my third step, which is this idea of realigning, Mm. realigning. And what do I mean by that? It's also one of the steps in the relaunch effect. And so what I wanted to make sure that you were doing is, all right, you've now gone ahead and you've been aware and you've looked at it and you're putting it down. You've gone ahead and you're doing this whole, you know, releasing of what it is. But now we want to truly spark up 
the parts of the brain that will tie to the emotional side of it. We've done the logical side, right? We've written all this down, logical, logical, logical. But now we want to get into the emotional side. And the way you do that, and Dr. Shannon Irvine has this great idea around actually refuting it. She calls it refute, which is go ahead and think of somebody you love and put that limiting belief onto them out loud and you just think, well, if I were to say, if you were like, you know, let's say you're, you know, my brother and I say, John, you're not good enough. Right. You can't have a successful business. You can't. And then all of a sudden you're like, you feel terrible. Mm. You're like, like, I, and if you put it on your kids, it becomes even more intense. Now, John Gray does something a little different. What he does in this, this part, this whole, you know, realign part of it is he says, write a letter to the person that you kind you know, you, you remember as being their belief. It was their belief. You know, like, let's say your dad always says, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. And a limiting belief is that I can never, I can never be truly financially successful. You would go back and you'd be like, dad. I can appreciate that this was your belief that money is hard to come by. Money grow, doesn't grow on trees, but I don't believe that. I believe that everyone can be financially successful. And you write a letter. You don't send it. I always get this like, do you send it? Do you send it? No, you don't. And nor do you say to that person, you can never be successful. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. This is something that you say out loud, but you say it out loud in the comforts of your own home. All right, so that is step number three. And I find that sometimes people need to do this even, you know, they do both of them. The good news about what Dr. Shannon always says is that you don't need to remember where it came from. Right. Right? You don't. And I guess it's it's fascinating there because when you're talking about that is is you're teaching yourself too, is that you don't have to you don't have to co-opt the beliefs of others. Um, even if it's been inbred in you in an early age or whatever, you don't have to, and you can set them aside. But I love that. I just love that that concept of of putting it on someone else and putting it on someone else that you wish all the all the best in the world for. Wow. And then you push that onto them. And then, I mean, what a great way of illuminating going, oh my goodness, what a, what am I doing to myself? Oh, it is just, it is a gut punch. <laughs> it just yeah. it just makes you feel like oh you just oh it's terrible. So then when I go through the belief blasters, the last one is now that you have done that, we need to rewrite the script, rewrite mm. it in. Imagine all the things that you said or all the things that you wrote down to that you know person that the belief probably started with. You then craft this rewrite part to be what is the opposite of that so it is i am i am worthy of having you know success i am good enough to have a seven figure eight figure business whatever the opposite is so once you rewrite that then this is the fun part you reprogram and everyone always says Oh, are these those affirmations? <laughs> and visualizations and, yeah, and your work and, and all that. Like, <laughs> are we going down the woo-woo path? <laughs> and I have to sit here and I'm going to say it right now, John. If I were to tell you that this is all neuroscience based and it works and it will allow you to reach goals that you never thought you could, why wouldn't you want to at least try it? So yeah, yeah. here's so here's what, what exactly what is the what what's the downside? What? You spend a little time. You spend a little time. That's and it. and yeah, and but what's the upside? Exactly. I mean, and I've seen it thousands of times. I've seen the craziest things that people are like, you know, I have this thing in my office that um, I've been called the magic maker. And I flip it back and I'm like, I'm not, it's you. I'm just helping. I'm giving you the tools. I'm giving you that wand that will allow you, because once you know this system, you can actually do this for any part of your life. So mm -hmm. the last one is this reprogram. Um, I'm going to share with you an app 
that I am not at all, I, I have nothing to do with this app. I just think it's a super mm -hmm. cool app. It's called Think Up. Think, Think Up. Up. And the best part of this app is that you can record the rewritten, the rewrite section of these, you know, the opposite of what you were feeling. You can record them and then it will allow you to put music behind it. It will allow them to go and loop so that you can then put down, I want to listen for five minutes. I want to listen for uh -huh. 10 minutes. And it is the coolest thing because when you listen in the morning, first thing before you get out of bed and you're in that sleepy state, your subconscious is really open and it's hearing this. And so I always say, you know, as soon as you start to wake up, you literally grab your phone, you have the Think Up app, you hit it, you listen for, you know, five minutes before you get out of bed and you're hearing, I am. I am worthy. I'm good enough. I have a successful business. I'm, you know, I have created the best company for me. I uh -huh. have an amazing life. All these great things. First off, it sets your day completely on the right path. I mean, you're yeah, like, yeah. woo. Why yeah, wouldn't you? And, and that's such a contrast to, and it's something I talk a lot about to, to people is, it's such a contrast to what do most people do when they wake up in the morning? grab their phone, they start looking at whatever new sites they look at, and, you know, maybe social media. And before you know it, their day starts off with being angry, being being distracted, being upset, maybe being jealous because you see something on, on, on Instagram, that's such. So all of these things, what about if you did um, what you're talking about, Hillary, here? What about the difference that would make if you're starting off with something that's talking about you and your your, your worthiness and what you can do? Such a such a such a f <laughs> exponentially better way to start your day. Well, and then you do it again before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And people say, you know, well, you know, do I really have to? And I say that's actually the most important one because then what you're doing is right as you're falling to sleep, your subconscious brain is going to be working all night for you. Yeah. But don't you want to feed it the good stuff before you go to bed versus like all the things that maybe didn't go right during the day? And yeah. I don't think you really want to be like thinking about those. You want to be promoting more of the good things that you want. And so the belief blasters is so effective. And here's the thing, and I just want to leave this, that it's been proven that, you know, people say, oh, it takes 21 days to create a new habit, all that. Well, it actually, in order to build a new neuro highway, this, this new pathway for this new belief, because you got to break down through synaptic pruning, the old belief, we got to break that down. Think about pruning your rose bushes. You got to snip those so that those don't keep coming up. But here's the key. It takes 21 days for everything to be neutral, neutral. Right. So this is where people are like, I've done it. I'm starting to see some good things. And then they stop. And I'm like, no, you can't stop now. You got to keep going because it's proven it actually takes 62 to 67 days for that new neural highway to be built and for the right. old, the old limiting belief, that old highway to be to be pruned to be synaptically pruned so it's such a fascinating and I, I i literally am like i just i love everything about this and that's why i've been talking about bugs for over 10 years and mm -hmm. as i have taught this process people literally are 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 saying, you know, oh my gosh. And yeah, things come up again, right? Maybe a different way. Maybe it's yeah. like, you know, you know, when you have an ant in the kitchen and mm -hmm. uh -oh, you find that <laughs> one ant and then you go to bed and in the morning, it's like, yeah, bananas. 4,000. Like, yeah, exactly. And so what we want to do is when you start to notice things that aren't in alignment, that aren't starting to work in your life, that's when you can sit here and say, oh my God, that, that, that gal, Hillary, what was she saying again? I got a bug. I got a bug coming yeah. up. So yeah, no, I, I love that. And and even the, I mean, I guess just one last question, just quickly. One of the thing, one of the phenomenons that I, I find really fascinating is, you know, there's a lot of people 
So obviously they have fear of failure. You said imposter syndrome, a lot of this. But I think I think there's also the the fear of success is quite interesting as well, is because somebody might listen and say, oh, this sounds fantastic. And then I could do all of these things. And then it's like, hmm then my life would change and maybe I'd have to do this or whatever. And it's funny how, how even when you get past the, the initial things that may hold you back, we're really good at inventing something else like fear of success. How crazy is that? You know what? And that is, it's not crazy. I'd say um, half the people. And what I find really interesting is as we really dive into our values, so many people's number one value is freedom. That's what they really want. Ah, you know, if you're in the corporate, I hate my job because I have no freedom. I got to be there eight to five. So they think, let's go over and be an entrepreneur. And then I'll have all this freedom to manage my own time. And then what happens is they end up having no freedom because then they're ultimately, you know, working in their business, not just on their business. And they end up saying, I'm even less free now that I have this business. And when you really get to the root of what it really is, It's that if they are super successful, then they're going to be working so much on the business. They're going to have to be there all the time that they actually lose their freedom, completely lose their freedom and they don't have it. And so it's this like, how can you be running a successful business? How can you make sure that the bugs, which is that, you know, hey, if I'm super successful, will I, will I have the support of my family? Because my family has never made that kind Mm -hmm. of money. Will I, you know, if I, if I start to have this success where I'm starting to be known out there, will people start to, you know, hate me because of that? Self-sabotage, it goes right back to those bugs, 100%, right back to the bugs. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, uh, that's that's great because I do think that when people make it through a lot of these things, that 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 final hurdle that puts it in, you know, they put it in front of themselves and they get through everything and then they back off because they start to look at, yeah, the what ifs of if I'm successful. Um, it's interesting. I always and just to finish, uh, um, I love the thing from uh, Chuck Norris. Right, he. Um, he 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 mentors kids right um, underprivileged kids and stuff because he came from a very poor background himself but whenever somebody is about to quit he always says to them what would you do if this was the last obstacle between you and success mm. and you quit before the last obstacle and he says it all and i just love that because it's so true and yeah it may not be the last obstacle but it's such a great concept isn't it? imagine if but later what on if? somebody's what, what if? if somebody said said, you know, it'd be great later. Somebody said, you remember that time you quit? Well, you were a day away from achieving everything you ever wanted. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Um, Listen, Hillary, this has been fantastic. It's so interesting. Um, All of Hillary's information is going to be below uh, this video with all the links. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit about yourself. Well, I um, have grown up in the Silicon Valley. I worked in corporate. Yes, I had that you know job that I had no freedom, um, but it wasn't an eight to five. It was more like a five a.m. until you know eight p.m. And then I started a consulting business when uh, coaching was just a thing of like brand new. I did a lot of the Silicon Valley CEOs here and loved it and started to launch my own businesses and created companies along the way. And now I have created a new one, the Relaunch Co, designed to help people launch, relaunch their businesses, relaunch their relationships, relaunch their life. And I have to say, it's one of those where I, I'm in, I, I, always, I call it my G zone, my genius zone. This is my great zone. This is where I have been like, you know, everything has been leading to this point. And so I've had a lot of bugs along the way that I've had to take <laughs> care of, but I feel like, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing at this point. Uh, it's, fant- it's fantastic. And I think that uh, obviously uh, one, if there's, if there's an, if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, um, that is that I think people have gotten a chance to reevaluate their lives. And so what you're doing now is is great, because I do think a lot of people are probably looking at how do I relaunch their lives? Maybe their business went, maybe, as you said, they had other things happened. But I think this is a fantastic time. So I would uh, definitely 
tell people to advise people check out check out hillary and check out the relaunchco.com listen again thanks hillary thank you for listening and i will see you all for another interview really soon thank you thanks john